Hi folks, Elise Dewsbury again uh, with another one of my picky technical topics. I want to talk uh, just briefly with you about transitions. And by this I mean, generally speaking, moving from one scene to another. Uh, let me clarify just quickly, um, uh, just, just to be sure that uh, my definition of a scene is that um, a new scene begins, generally speaking, when either there's a change of location or a passage of time. Um, it is not generally accepted these days to use French scenes. It's an old-fashioned way of doing scenes, which sometimes a stage manager will use nowadays in order to plan a schedule. And, and that happens whenever a new character enters a scene or a character leaves a scene, you start a new scene. That's called a French scene. We don't really use those anymore, except possibly, as I say, a stage manager planning a schedule. Uh, so in general, a, a scene, a new scene needs to begin if there's going to be a change of location or a passage of time. Now, the exception to that would be if you are um, doing a montage of short scenes that flow together, or if you're trying to create a fluidity between scenes where, um, say, your lead character ends one scene, but the lights don't go out on that character, that the, the lead character will move directly, you know, walk across the stage as a new scene swirls around them, and suddenly now they're in a new place, and it's the next morning, but they've been talking to us all along, or singing at us, or we've been following along, and then that isn't necessarily a new scene, if you have that kind of fluidity in mind. Um, but what I really want to talk about right now is where you really are when you do plan on starting a new scene because there's going to be a change of location or a, a passage of time. And I want you to get into the habit of always, even at the outline level, you can be thinking about this, thinking about what characters are at the end of one scene and who's at the top of the next scene. Um, and how is that going to work logistically? You need to think with the eye of a director. Imagine your actor, your lead actress on stage talking, you know, she's, she's at home, she's going to bed, um, uh, she's lying down and she's saying, you know, being tucked in by her mother and saying goodnight and her mother leaves the room and then you, you say end of scene and in the next scene that same character who was going to sleep is now at breakfast in the kitchen, um, you know, talking to her father. Um, logistically, the only way that could happen as written is if the lights went down on the scene in the bedroom and then the audience sits and waits in darkness for a moment while the actor uh, playing the role gets up out of bed, changes their clothes, runs to the other part of the stage, sits down at the breakfast table, and the lights come back up. Now, granted, that can happen reasonably quickly, but you have to bear in mind that um, uh, for an audience, even uh, three or four seconds of darkness is an eternity, and, and it's just not really how... There was a time uh, in the old days where that would happen. The curtain would come down and the audience would sit. Maybe they'd chat with their friends or they'd look at their program, see what's coming up next and wait for the, for the um, curtain to rise. There was even a time when the script itself would say the curtain uh, um, falls and holds for 10 seconds to denote the passage of three years. That, you know, but that is an extremely old-fashioned way of approaching transitions between scenes. Nowadays, um, it, both in plays and, but especially in musicals, um, scene transitions are much more filmic. Uh, we, we have a much more cinematic approach to stagecraft, and we expect the action to keep going all the time and never stop, and, and even if we have a blackout, we expect that it's not going to last very long, and something else is going to start right away. And so generally speaking, what you're aiming for is the lights go down on the scene with the little girl being put to bed by her mother, and at the same moment, the lights cross fade and open and come up on the other side of the stage where there's a different scene in a different place at a different time. But what that means to you as a playwright is that new scene cannot contain any of the characters who are within the final moment of the previous scene because they won't have had time to get there. It's as simple as that. It's just logistics. Um, and, and so you really have to think about that and, and provide sometimes what I would refer to as a buffer. Can you, if you want that actress to come down to breakfast, and you just write two or three lines of dialogue, you know, half a page at most between a couple of other characters, like dad's there alone and he's on the phone or he's with, you know, somebody else in the family. And then the little girl enters and says, good morning, daddy, what's for breakfast? Because in, in that brief amount of time, you've given that girl time to leap out of bed, run backstage, be attacked by the dressers who are going to give her another, another set of clothes and whisk her on to come make the next entry. As I say, it can happen very quickly, but you do have to provide that buffer. So if you want there to be that uninterrupted flow, that cinematic flow from scene to scene, 
it's on you as a playwright to make sure that you are not making that really hard for your director by, by, um, by uh, not uh, logistically allowing your actor time, not your character, but your actor time to, to make the transition that they need to make. Um, now, if you were to turn in that scene, as I mentioned before, that if, if you turned in something like that and I had to approach that as a director, I would have to rack my brain and think, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have to add a transitional moment. I'm going to have to have some crossover music. I'm going to have to... Um, I'm going to have to, you know, uh, have some dancers appear downstage, something to entertain the audience to keep them, uh, you know, interested. Because I am not, as a director, I am not going to bring the lights down and then just wait until that actress has time to make the cross she needs to make and then bring the lights up in the new scene. That is not going to be an option. Um, and if I read a script that has a lot of that kind of thing going on, then as a director, I'm going, well, I can't do this because these transitions are impossible to accomplish. And, uh, and I will continue to say that I think this is your job as a playwright, even at the outline level, to, be, to bear in mind that this is, this is on you to make sure that you have provided these buffers. It is one of the main reasons to have a subplot in, in any play or musical. There are other reasons, but one of the main reasons is so that we can catch up on the subplot while the actors from the plot are changing their clothes and getting to a different part of the stage. So you are responsible for those logistics and those technicalities and you need to work them in at an integral level into your script. So it, it isn't incumbent upon a director and a creative team to try to figure out how to fix the, those, those logistical issues with your script. So um, take a look at, you know, once if, if, if you haven't done it beforehand, I think, think about it while you're writing the outline. But if you've written the play, go and look at it. Take a look at what's at the very end of a scene and then what's at the top of the next scene. And think about it as a director. Visualize it. What is your audience seeing? How is your director going to manage that transition? Is it doable or not? And if it's not, rethink it and see if you can find a way to get your, your, the character who needs to be in the next scene out of the scene before it ends or, or, or delay their entrance in the next scene. Um, that's on you. So, um, so uh, over and out with that picky topic, and we'll move on to other things next time around. Thanks for listening.